All right, everybody, welcome to our Sunday live webinar. Um, it is actually Sunday, December 25th, so Merry Christmas to all of you guys out there that are celebrating Christmas and or Hanukkah, whatever you're celebrating, or just having um, some time off with the holidays, spending it with the family. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful weekend, and we're going to finish off this year super strong. Uh, we're going to jump right into 2017 just Oh man, I'm I'm just so excited for 2017, guys. There's so many things to come. I love when the markets come back, um, and there's just like the trends are coming back. And my favorite time to trade, guys, is probably between like March and July. You know, that's when you really see a lot of trading happening. Markets are moving very fluidly, and so that's what I'm looking forward to. But um, I'm just looking forward to the holidays being over. Uh, that way, we can get back into the charts, and they can, you know, we can actually start making sense of things. Um, but let's just jump right into things, guys. Let's go ahead and let's check out the economic calendar for this week. And I apologize if you guys hear background mute or background sounds. I can't really help my family too much. So look at this, guys. So Monday, look at tomorrow, right? It's a bank holiday. So the markets are closed tomorrow, essentially. So there's not going to be, I mean, you can enter a trade, right? Like the markets will be open, but all these banks are going to be closed. All right. They're all going to be closed. There's going to be like nothing. Um, and I mean, you guys see this week, like it's super light. There's not a whole lot of uh, market moving news. There's like what four high impact folders that I see this week. So guys, it's end of the year. You guys have to understand that the, the, the money that's in the markets, right? People talk about it being, you know, $5.3 trillion or whatever. Retail traders only make up a, like retail traders, you, me, we only make up a small percentage of the actual volume in the Forex market. So that being said, you know, a lot of the volume comes from like hedge funds and institutional traders and et cetera, et cetera. And those, um, like hedge funds, for instance, let's say you're a hedge fund manager, right? You're, you're, let's say you're trading like, you know, billion dollar accounts as a hedge fund manager. Well, if you get a bonus as a hedge fund manager, you get a bonus that gets paid off of closed positions. That mean that means that, you know, that means, what does that mean? You have to have the position closed, done, right? Liquidated. So that being said, that's why you aren't seeing like, a lot of movement in the markets is because a lot of the movement comes from long-term positions, um, you know, futures, all, you know, I, everything that isn't retail trading moves the market. So that being said, uh, all those traders, hedge fund managers, institutional traders, the people that really move the market, they aren't even trading this week at all. So I obviously, I give a service to my customers, right? So I want to, I don't want to just say like, you know, oh, well, screw it. We'll come back, you know, on in 2017, I'm still going to be looking for opportunities for you guys. Um, but let's just jump right on into it. I'll give you guys as my opinion on what I think the market is going to do this week. Personally, I think gold still has a push lower. Okay. I know a lot of people that are buying gold right now. We're actually on a sell on the trade copier. Um, for those that aren't in the premium group, we have a sell on the MAM right now on the trade copier. I also have a sell on my personal account and I'm expecting this to at least go down to 1120 before moving up. Now I do believe that, um, towards the beginning of 2017 moving in, I don't know if it's going to happen, you know, January 1st or if it's going to happen, you know, a little bit into January, but I do believe that we will see gold, uh, do something like this. Let me get my marker out for you guys. Just so you guys can see what I, what my opinion of things, right? And, and this doesn't have to go my way, but I think it's going to come down to this area and then we're going to start to move up. All right. 1200 will be our first area to break through various psychological area. And then it'll be 1300, which will be this previous resistance, which we've had here for a very long time. And if, for those of you guys that are following me and you guys um, are new to these live webinars, I'll go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see the trend lines that we have on gold. Oh, sorry guys. All right. So this trend line right here, this one that I have highlighted, this lower one, okay, where it intersects with this green box right here. Um, this is actually on the weekly, I believe. Zoom all the way out. All right. So you guys can see right there, all the way back from 2005, this goes back, 2004, 2005, this trend line. So this is a very major, major, major level of support on the higher time frames for this pair. You guys can see it. Watch, let me put on auto. There you go. You guys can kind of see it a little bit. So this is the continuation of that line right here, which we are getting towards right now, which is at 1120. So more intermediately, you guys can see 
now you guys, hopefully that line makes sense to you guys. And then of course we have this line right here. We kind of had this channel that we were working in previously. I'll delete this or I'll, I'll keep that there. So you guys can see this channel. You guys see right here. Nope. Let me get my marker. All right. Channel. And then we broke out of it and now we're coming back down to retest it. All right. And then from here, I think we'll start moving up like that. All right. And of course it doesn't have to happen. You know, we could continue making lower lows. We could go into the thousands easily, but, um, I do still believe that there is easily one more push in gold, easily one more push in gold and gold moves in stairs. You guys can see on like the four hour, right? It's very consolidative. And then we usually see some drops in like a very small window, like a four to eight hour period. So some major consolidation for over 48 hours and then a drop. Right. That's actually like over 60 hours of consolidation, another over 60 hours of consolidation. And then a drop that happened in less than eight hours, right? Another over 60 hours of consolidation and then a drop, right? Another over, well, that's like almost over a hundred hours of consolidation and then a drop, right? Then we had about 40 hours of consolidation, a little bit more than that right here. And then we had a drop. Okay. So now we're having this extended consolidation over a hundred hours of consolidation, kind of like we, how we did right here. All right. So I, I think we're still going to inch lower. We're still going to inch a little bit lower. So if you guys are short on gold, hold those positions. Um, and just to be clear, some of you guys that follow me in telegram, make sure you guys aren't just, you know, blindly taking my trades and my calls. You guys should really um, follow me for a while and understand my trading style. My trading style is long-term intra-week. So, you know, if you take a trade on Sunday or Monday, it'll be either higher or lower than where I'm predicting it to be by Thursday or Friday. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen that Monday night. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen that Sunday night. It means when I talk about long-term trades or I, I say, I believe gold is going to continue moving lower this week. It doesn't mean like right when I post it guys, it doesn't mean that you know, if I post it on Sunday and I'm like, Hey guys, I think gold is going to go lower this week. It could jump up 50 pips before dropping down 200, 300, right? I'm talking about at the end of the week, it's going to be lower than where opened at the beginning of the week or at some point throughout this week, it's going to end up making new lows. It might close higher, but at some point between now and Friday, I do believe um, some type of new lows will be made. So dollar index is still in an uptrend guys. And this is kind of my catalyst behind, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete this right here. All right. Uh, this pair and then let me put on the daily so you guys can see what we're working with. All right. So on the daily, we've broken through our major resistance. And if we actually look at the, where's this Fibonacci in at? Let's see here. Okay. So our Fibonacci level is from the swing high. Interesting. I, yeah, I put this on here last week because once we broke this level, you guys see the 100.50 level, this previous, we kind of over the past year, We've made this giant bull flag. You guys see that? All right. So once we break this resistance and there's nothing over here, look, look to the left. There's nothing over here. What you have to do is you have to continue moving back on time, like pulling back on your time frames. If you can't find any resistance on the daily, then you go to the weekly. So that's what I've done in this case. And we've just marked off the swing high. Looks like it was in 2001, the high of 2001 to the low of 2008. And if we have that mapped out, we've broken through the 61.8% level. So, I mean, this should continue going for the, for the stars, right? We should continue moving higher. Um, remember just because we've broken through all these resistance level doesn't mean it just has to fly up. If you guys have been following me for a long time, you guys will know that since Ooh, September since October, one of those two months for weeks and months now, guys, I've been talking about the dollar index hitting 103. Okay. This area way before, like way back in here, like even past that when we were, when we weren't even close to breaking out yet, I just, you guys, it, and it goes back to that flag on the weekly. We're very, very bullish. So that being said, you know, there's a lot of people like selling the dollar already. I don't think it's time to sell the dollar trade with the trend. The trend is your friend and we'll keep it as simple as that. So we have this consolidation going on right now, but we have a flag forming.
We still haven't made lower lows. If we break through this green box and we start, you know, making lower lows like this, then yeah, then we're going to start to be a little apprehensive about buying the dollar. But until then, still quite bullish on the dollar throughout the week. Dollar index, same thing, but the opposite of the dollar index. I'm sorry, Euro USD is the opposite of the dollar index, okay? So let's put it on the daily. We've been making lower lows and continuing to move lower. Let me zoom out for you guys. But the opposite of the dollar index, okay? We have a bearish flag that's been being created this 2015. And now we're breaking out of it. So I think we're still going to see some moves to the downside before we start to see a sell-off on the dollar. Okay, right now the euro, I, I don't know if you guys know about Europe also. Um, basically since, uh, for, for almost since the U.S. economies crashed in 2009, inversely, Europe, okay, the ECB, the European Central Bank, they've been doing what's called quantitative easing. And that's basically, it's just a fancy word for inflation. All right. And they talked about it possibly ending or slowing down, uh, I think January of this year, but now they're pushing the easing until March of this year or something like that. I, I need, I would, don't quote me on that guys, but all you need to know generally, and that's why you don't need to know all the fundamentals. You don't need to know dates and everything like that. That's the great part about trading. As long as you just know what's happening. And right now, Europe is, they have content, they have agreed to continue their easing process, which means inflating their currency even more, which means a devaluation of the Euro and the dollar is, is strong right now. So we're going to continue to trade with the trend. So I think this is going to keep moving lower. Um, USD chafe. Sorry for the Wi-Fi guys. All right. I don't know why USD chafe isn't loading. Let me see. All right, let me know, guys. I think I just, I lost connection for a second. Can you guys hear me okay still? Just let me know. Let me get like a little thumbs up or something. All right. Okay, awesome, Darsh. Okay, great. All right, yeah, sorry, guys. I lost internet for just a second. All right, USD chafe, opposite of Euro USD. It's, and guys, like, Here's, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing is, is I've had the same, if you guys have just followed my live sessions for even just my Sunday live sessions and take, taking trades just based off of my Sunday live sessions, you guys would be in so much profit because I've, I basically sound like a broken record on these Sunday webinars because for the past like five or six weeks, we've had the same, the same bias on everything, right? Continue selling gold, continue selling Euro USD, continue buying USD chafe. Right. There's only some pairs like actually we're going to get to the pound dollar right now. A couple other pairs that we've kind of been on the fence about. But for the most part, guys, we've been buying the dollar. So USD chafe, same thing. Look at it, guys. Still poised to the upside. Still poised to the upside. You guys see that flag? We broke through this major key resistance, which is the top. All right. If we put this on the daily, I'll show you guys the top. Boom. There's our zone. Let's see on the weekly if it looks a little bit better. Same thing on the daily. This zone, and you guys can see that. We have it marked right here because of this top. This is actually the Brexit. Is this Brexit? Yeah, this is the Brexit. No, that's not Brexit. I don't know what this is. 2015. I would have to go back and see what happened on that day, why this dropped like crazy. But we have these couple tops, even though it broke through, this is just a zone. And then I just like it because we had this top that kind of was forming, um, acting as resistance, and then we ended up breaking through it. Okay, so now we're just doing, we're doing a classic retest, guys. Okay? So daily, look at this. You guys see? When you get up to an area, you wait to see what's going to happen. We find out it wants to break through. You wait for the retest, and then you keep buying. All right, so don't sell USD chafe yet. All right, pound dollar. I think pound dollar is going to keep moving a little bit lower, guys. Um, it's in a very strong downtrend because it broke out of this wedge. You guys remember when we were in this wedge, if you guys watched the webinars, 
we talked about not trading this pair until after it broke out of the wedge. All right, because it's either going to break up to one side or break up to the other side. And so now we're breaking to the downside. So any pullbacks look to sell. Any pullbacks look to sell. Very, very simple. All right, so even this could be like another good sell zone. Right there. We're actually still in a sell. Well, depending on what you guys did, um, I'm personally still in on a sell on the pound dollar. Our official signal is still rolling. It hit take profit one. It's on its way to, it was actually like three pips away from take profit two down here. Um, but this could give us an opportunity to add on to our sell position depending on what kind of formations we have if we get confirmation of shorting. So like on the one hour, that, when we talk about confirmation, we're talking about like exhaustion candles, bearish engulfing candles, something signaling some more downside momentum. All right, pound yen is actually hitting some pretty solid support. All right, it's still in, a, in, in what's funny, guys, is some people like still think that the pound yen is going to keep dropping. And, and it could, it very well could, but we're at major, major resistance. I think we're still headed up to make new highs, guys, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy, all right, but people thought I was crazy when I said gold would go down to 1150, and people thought I was crazy when I said the dollar index would go to 103. And people said I was crazy when, Euro, when I said Euro USD would break the support the that weekly support right everybody said no way no way right but again it happened all right Pe people get too caught up on like the day-to-day -day things guys and like the markets on like a daily basis and they forget to look at the overall trend they forget to see like what's actually happening in the markets right like when i look at the markets guys like i know 99 percent of you guys are probably looking at like this area right here you guys are like oh it's in a downtrend sell sell pound yen. That's why you guys are all losing money. That's why you guys are all losing money. It's because, and I, sorry, I don't mean to say it like that. Not all you guys are losing money, but again, what's a statistic? 95% of people lose money in the market. So the 95% of you that are losing money, that's why it's because you guys aren't looking at the long-term picture of this pair. Okay. So, and, and don't get me wrong. You can scalp. Yes. But I'm talking about position traders. I'm talking about like people right now that are saying, Oh, their take profits is at 140, 137, you know, aiming for, for it to like drop hard. But, and, and again, it could happen, but uh, the bias is still to the upside on this pair. We have some very, very, very strong support that we hit on Friday. And so we're going to see what happens. Is it going to respect it? Cause if so, I mean, it's respecting it right now, right? We have three, four hour candles that stopped at this major support. So I think we'll still see a push higher throughout the week, guys. And it might, again, it might not be this week because it's, you know, uh, Christmas today, banks are closed tomorrow. And then there's New Year's Eve on Saturday. I think, let me see, New Year's Eve on, yeah, New Year's Eve on Saturday. So markets are going to be in anticipation for the new year. All right. AUD USD guys. Um, AUD USD, I wouldn't touch right now because it is kind of at our PRZ. We're going to see what happens uh, if it's going to make a little bit push lower, which I think it could. I think it, because gold might drop a little bit lower, in my opinion, I think AUD USD may not respect this support, but end up coming back up eventually. So, what I mean by this is I think it could drop a little bit below this support. Now, I think that that's going to be a fake out personally, okay, to trap sellers that are trying to sell once they see this breakout. And I'm, so I'm going to be looking for buys um, once we head a little bit lower, just like I'm going to be looking for buys on AUD USD. I mean, I'm sorry, on gold once it moves a little bit lower. And also I think NZD USD. Yeah. So here's the thing guys, NZD USD still hasn't moved into our target buy yet. So remember AUD USD, look at the charts, right? Look at AUD USD and then look at NZD USD. They aren't exactly the same. They aren't exactly the same, but they move they have a positive correlation to each other. So if NZD USD is going to drop a bunch, then AUD USD should inch its way down a little bit lower. If you guys look, and if you guys want to know why, look on a map. If you, I know a lot of people don't know geography. New Zealand, guys, is right off of the coast of Australia. It's like literally right next to it. All right. So they're like their neighbors. New Zealand is the closest country to Australia. So. That's that. That's why they move together. 
some people are always like, why? Like, it's like they'd never looked on a map or something before. So I just want to let you guys know that in case you didn't know. Let's look at USD Jappy real quick. Oh, the US. Sorry if my internet's in and out, guys. Oh, okay. All over the place. All right. USD Jappy. All right, USD Jappy guys, I think still has higher to go, right? Just kind of like each pair, just continuing their trend. Um, and why do I think that, guys, is because of last week, right? We just haven't had any um, exhaustion to the downside yet. We're still respecting this major support, right? We still have this flag that's being formed, okay? So until we were to break these lows, or even these, you know, previous highs, and we if price was to come down here, then yeah, then we could be looking at selling USD Jappy. But guys, don't don't sell USD Jappy. Don't look at this area and be like, oh, USD Jappy is going down. Because what's going to happen is you're going to hesitate selling heat. Okay, well, let me just explain something to you guys. Let me show you like why why you have to trade with the long term trend. Or you just have to have balls and get into a trade and, and have confidence when you get into it if you're going to scalp, right? Let me show you guys why. Because in, right here, right, you guys are like, oh, no, it's probably going up, right? Because traders are so emotional, right? And then they see this four-hour candle and they, they get a, they, they, they're they like, oh, I want to sell it, right? But they hesitate, right? You usually don't sell right away or buy at the top, right? Most traders end up picking a top or a bottom and being wrong in both places. So th the problem is, guys, is that everybody hesitates to sell during this time, right? And then they see the, this like four-hour candle and they're like, oh, this pair is so bearish. It's going to drop so hard, right? And then they end up selling and then that's when the markets keep going up. And that's, that's, it's not, that's not market makers, guys. That's just experience. You have to know just from experience what to do and what not to do. You can't like come into Forex and like after three months think you know everything or even after a year think you know everything. You know, like I don't even, I'm still learning things on a regular basis too. And I'm a full time trader. I trade, I make my money, make my living off of trading. So, there's still things that you pick up every day, but my, the key is it's not be like overconfident. You always want to be humble and always learning and, you know, be like, okay, what can I learn today? What can I take from this? What can I do better on this trade next time or this type of trade next time? So again, USD Jappy, look for buys on this pair. Markets are going to be dead though, guys, just so you guys know, there's markets aren't going to be doing much this week. All right. So look for buys on this pair. USD CAD. Look for buys. I think that we're going to, well, we're near the 50% retracement level. We're getting there. So wh when I say buy guys, you can continue to buy into the trend up until the 50% level. Okay. But this is a very big level. It got rejected earlier this year. Actually, just a couple weeks ago. Got rejected right here. You guys can see this is the 50% level. All right. So price was rejected. We may have another rejection. If we get a double top to form, then that's going to be some good, a good push to the downside. Now, let me tell you guys this too, is that you guys know how I said gold, I think it's going to go up a little bit, a little bit lower. And then we're going to be looking for like a long-term buy. All right. Gold and USD CAD recently have been pretty much doing the opposite of each other. You can say that. So if gold is going to go down a little bit lower and then going up, then USD CAD is going to go up a little bit higher and then come down. So this could give us good conviction to get in a sell in this area. Um, and again, I'm not biased to the upside until the 50% level breaks. Okay. But because we are super bullish, I wouldn't, what I'm saying is I wouldn't be surprised if that 50% level did break. All right. And oil, we haven't been touching for the past while oil is all over the place not even looking at it right now not even looking to trade it but i mean if it, i mean oil looks like it's it's picking up some momentum to the upside so if we do find out that the true trend that's trying to start you know for the next couple weeks or couple months at least is up for oil then that's going to be down for usd cad so that would give us even more conviction to sell around the 50 percent level all right. So I'm going to have my eyes on the charts, guys. Obviously, you know, today I'm with, I'm with the family. I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm in my like answer room right now, like doing this for you guys. So I'm, I'm obviously dedicated here to giving you guys as many setups and I don't want to just blow off today just cause it's Christmas, but 
Um, you know, we, it is like a once in a year thing and I don't get to see my family as much. So today I'm pretty much going to be with my family, just kind of catching up and stuff. Like I said, I think the last time I saw this whole side of my family is probably like four or five years ago. So, um, a lot of catching up to do today. Um, but I will be driving back. Um, I'm actually in a different city right now. I'll be driving back to my town tonight and then I'll uh, be ready to hit the, hit the rest of the week hard. You know, I'm going to be looking for setups, but guys, weeks like this, this week, last week, the week before last, when markets just really aren't moving a whole lot and we're just kind of like sitting and waiting around, don't get discouraged guys. Like you can't get discouraged by this stuff. Like we're all human beings. I know it's like frustrating when things aren't going your way, but it's all a mindset guys. It's all perspective at the end of the day. It's the way you look at things. If it's, if you're getting frustrated, it's cause it's just not happening as fast as you want it to happen, right? Like the growth in your account. And that's just normal. That's just the way trading is. So maybe lower your expectations a little bit, you know, get a little bit more realistic, you know, aim for, if you're brand new guys, you shouldn't even be aiming for any growth in a month. You should just be aiming to be, learning and being profitable on a demo account. Then once you're profitable on a demo account, just look to end the, when, when you start to invest real money, like guys, don't be like, Oh, I want to double my account this month. I want to triple my account this month, or I want to increase my account by 50% this month. That is how you blow your account. When you're, when you're brand new and you start on a live account, just be happy that you end the month with a higher account balance than you did at the beginning of the month, whether that's 1%, 2%, 3%, even if you can grow your account 1% in a month, let me tell you that, let me repeat this. If you can grow your account even 1% in a month, you are already a part of the 5%. All right, let that sink in guys. If you can grow your account even 1% a month, you're already a part of the 5%. All right. It's because it's about long-term growth, guys. And I mean, I hear everybody on Facebook talking about it, you know, mentors and stuff. You know, everybody can tell you guys at the end of the day, but it's, it's up to you guys to change that mindset. I used to be in the same boat. I used to struggle. I used to want everything now, now, now. I want to double my account this month, then double it the next month, then, you know, turn uh, $1,000 into $100,000 in the next six months, right? That's not realistic, guys. That's not a realistic goal. A realistic goal is 5% growth or less a month, like 2% growth, 1% growth a month. That is a realistic goal until you are a professional trader and you are doing it full time, you know, then you can aim for 5% a month, 10% a month, right? 15% a month. Keep those goals. But that's it guys. That, that's my, that's my little spiel for today. I hope you guys all have a one. I'm really confused. Maybe someone can enlighten me. I don't know why gold, let me try reloading my page. I don't know why gold isn't loading right now. Maybe gold is closed for the weekend and then maybe it's like closed all the way until tomorrow and then reopens Tuesday. I'm not exactly sure. Let's see if it updates. Nope, gold hasn't updated yet. Usually gold opens an hour after, for me at least, with FX Choice. They usually open their servers for gold an hour after at 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour after that actual market's open. But even on trading view, normally they open at 5 p.m. Eastern and it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern and it still doesn't open. So I'm a little bit, I'm not too sure what's why gold is still closed and everything else is moving, but I think the dollar index is still closed as well, but that's usually normal because it has like, it's like spurts. Actually, it was open today. You can see it was open this hour. It's actually open right now. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's, what's going on with gold. We'll find out. I'll, I'm going to try to find out why the chart isn't uploading. But if you guys see right here, see how it says real time. It doesn't say offline. So that means like gold is open, but I don't know why. Let's see on the one minute if it has. No, I don't know what's going on. So that's it guys. Uh, so long story short, uh, if you guys are just tuning in, I think that the, the, your best opportunities this week is look for gold to move a little bit lower. Look for Euro USD to move a little bit lower. Look for pound dollar to move a little bit lower. Um, and I think those are, those are the three best pairs. And then, Oh, and then USD CAD to move a little bit higher. I think those four are going to be our best opportunity. And then of course, USD Jabby to move higher as well. So those like four or five pairs are our best opportunities this week. But if you guys have any final questions, if you have any questions about anything, throw them in the chat room real quick. I can answer them for you guys, but I am super excited for 2017 guys. I'm just excited to like, when we don't have to worry about like things like the end of the year, we don't have to worry about elections. We don't have to, you know, it's just like a normal trading experience. You know, we just have to 
worry about, you know, NFP and that's pretty much it, right? Like, you know, all the, that's pretty much it for the big things. Just NFP first Friday of every month. Like that's the way I enjoy trading. I hate having to be like, Oh, you know, oh, next week is elections. Cause it just creates this whole sentiment in the market and just, you know, traders are scared and, and whatnot. So I'm, I'm very excited for what 2017 has to bring. Um, guys, I appreciate all you. It doesn't look like anybody has any questions. If you guys do have any questions after watching this, please feel free to shoot me a message on, you know, Facebook, Telegram, Slack, if you're a premium member. Um, and then I will just tell you guys that if you are a free member and you guys are watching this and you're interested in joining, uh, my premium group where I actually do daily live sessions Sunday through Thursday, um, every single day for the premium group, it's all recorded in a whole back office that you can like, um, watch them if you aren't able to designate, you know, time when I'm actually doing them, but I record them and you can rewatch the recording every single week or every single day. Um, and then I give out an average of five to 10 signals every single week. Um, and that's, and then of course the trade copier, I have a free trade copier where you can connect your account to mine. I take zero commissions, just the premium membership fee, which is 69 bucks a month. Uh, but if you guys want some more information on that, we have it all on my website. Just go to positivetraders.us. Uh, it looks just like that, positivetraders.us. You can go to my website, read through it. It's got a bio of me, my two business partners, Cal and Louie. You can see our uh, track record, all that good stuff. You can go read some reviews about other premium members. We're on Forex Peace Army. We have a five-star review on there. So um, that's pretty much And Of course, I have some pretty bad internet, and these images are really high quality, so it took a second to load. But you guys can come on here and, and read all about us and, and uh, message me if you guys have any questions. But stay safe this week, guys. Keep that risk low. Remember, the secret to winning is not how much you can make in a week, not how much you can make in a month. It's how consistent you can stay over a long period of time and risk management. It all goes down to risk management, guys. So have a great Christmas, guys. Have a happy new year coming up. Happy Hanukkah, whatever you guys celebrate. I hope you guys are just getting to spend it with loved ones. But I appreciate and love all of you guys. Thank you so much. And you guys have a wonderful afternoon. See you guys later.